Yeah. In this uh, session, <coughs> we are going to deal with uh, the fundamental law of active portfolio management in which we actually uh, look at what are the assumptions this fundamental law makes and using this, how do I compute the information ratio? So this is another dimension to the information ratio computation. So this is uh, coming from a different dimension, primarily looking at the portfolio manager's uh, skills and also kind of experience. What is his success rate earlier or basically uh, how many uh, how many uh, forecasts he has done earlier or how many uh, forecasts he is doing per year. All these things based on all these various factors we are trying to arrive at another definition to the information ratio which is uh, helping us in uh, performing uh, uh, the active uh, portfolio decision. Right. So, based on this, let me uh, look at the new definition to the information ratio. It says information coefficient times the square root of the breadth of information. So, the breadth is more dealing with number of forecasts of active return right number of forecasts of active return the manager is typically making on securities so this is primarily from the perspective of the security uh, assessment uh, person because on the other side we would also uh, look at a market timer someone who bets market on going up or going down so here we are looking at it from a security uh, assessment uh, person perspective or security selector perspective. So when I say breadth here, the number of forecasts which are being made by the manager in a year based on the information that is available and that too based on independent information. It's not like, okay, one set of news he heard and based on that he has made four forecasts then we don't call it as independent information with one set of new information if he is making one forecast another information got another stock being forecasted like that what are the number of forecasts that he is making in one year that is what we are calling as the breadth and when it comes to information coefficient it's a measure of the skill of the manager so basically whatever the returns he has forecasted versus the actual returns. When I take the correlation between the two, that is the information uh, the co coefficient of the manager. So it can be positive, it can be negative. So whatever the forecast he is making versus what is the actual return that has come, the correlation between the two is an indication of uh, information coefficient and the number of uh, such kind of forecasts he is making in a year based on independent information is an indicator of breadth. The multiplication of the two is what I call as the information ratio for the manager, especially for a security selector kind of a manager. We get this kind. So even if he is, let's say here he is making uh, two forecasts in a month or two forecasts in a quarter then his breadth I can directly take it as 8. So the information coefficient is coming out as the correlation between the forecasted returns and actual returns. Breadth is simply the number. So based on this I can find out that this is the information ratio of the manager. So the manager with the highest information uh, ratio will uh, broadly be uh, chosen as per our uh, earlier understanding the manager with the highest uh, information ratio will be uh, chosen because uh, uh, the value addition will be more with such kind of information, uh, uh, higher uh, information ratio. And uh, so from any manager standpoint, he can increase the information ratio 
by either increasing the information coefficient if the information coefficient has to increase means forecasting accuracy has to increase forecasting accuracy increase or he may keep the forecasting accuracy at the same layer but increase the number of uh, forecast which he is making even then he can increase the information ratio and the other way to look at is the information ratio is more or less additive which means let's say initially i got uh, an information ratio of 1 and now i started uh, analyzing or i started making another 30 forecasts in a year extra i started making a, another 30 forecasts uh, in a year apart from my existing uh, scenario where i had an information ratio of 1 i'm making uh, another uh, 30 forecasts in a year with an information coefficient of 0 0.2 then my new information ratio is nothing but at the information ratio square level I can add. So the initial information ratio which is 1 plus the second information ratio information coefficient squared because IR2 squared which is IR is nothing but IC into square root of BR. So information coefficient square into root of BR square which is BR. So probably my information ratio can become 0 0.04 into 30. So 1 squared plus 1.2. So 2.2 and probably my IR will be square root of 2.2. So somewhere close to 1.5. So that is how I can increase my IR. Right, I can increase my IR probably by either increasing my IC or increasing the breadth. So that can increase the IR and IR is following an additivity principle at least at the squaring level. So if at all I am talking about uh, uh, two different um, equity uh, managers with uh, different levels of uh, IR, I can very well find out what is the information ratio of the entire firm by doing IR1 squared plus IR2 squared finding out the combined uh, IR and say that this is the information ratio associated with the firm. So that kind of calculations also can be very well handled. And the other way to look at is, so the moment uh, now I am trying to combine the information which we have in the earlier uh, scenario where we talk about optimal level of risk. We have used the formula for optimal level of risk, we said information ratio by 2 lambda. So now I can call it as information coefficient into square root of breadth by 2 lambda. So my optimal level of risk changes based on the information coefficient management manager skill, the number of uh, forecasts he is making and also the risk taking level or risk aversion level of the investor. Similarly, the value addition, we have initially uh, said the value addition is IR squared by 4 lambda. So I can very well write IC squared into BR by 4 lambda. Again, the value addition also can be expressed in terms of information coefficient as well as the breadth using this particular information. So this is uh, one more in terms of combining the two different definitions of IR and uh, arriving at optimal level of risks or value additions and all these uh, particular activities. Then now we come to the other set of uh, people who are called as market timing timers. Basically these are the set of people they don't choose the security, they don't choose the returns and all that. They focus more on making the bets on the market uh, direction. Today it will go up or today it will go down. So I am looking at num uh, the number of forecasts that are being made and the actuals that they have done with respect to the direction of the market. And for that kind of a role, I can find out the information coefficient as twice the number of correct predictions by number of actual uh, predictions total number of predictions done 
minus 1. This is what is an indicator of information uh, coefficient in case of market timer. So, uh, for each of them the information coefficient will differ but after that finding out the IR the process is still the same information coefficient into the square root of the breadth. So, breadth again is uh, different for uh, each one because in case of uh, market timer, the breadth is number of times he has uh, done such kind of uh, prediction about the timing of the market. So, breadth, uh, the definition of the breadth is same in uh, both the cases, but the, the way we compute the information uh, coefficient is different for market timer versus a security selector. Now, let's say we have uh, uh, we have uh, decided on one information uh, coefficient uh, we have arrived at one information coefficient based on uh, the information that is available with the manager so based on uh, the information that is available he has made some forecasts and based on the actuals we are finding out uh, the correlation between them and say that this is the original information coefficient for the manager. Now he got some new information. New information, new data, new information. Now, to what extent this is correlated with this information? Right, if both of them are more or less similar kind of an information, then probably his uh, information skill, I mean the skill of the manager is not going to increase in any way. But if this is another new source of information, where the correlation between these two is exactly not one but much lesser than one, then his information coefficient can typically grow. And from that standpoint we are saying original information coefficient into square root of 2 by 1 plus r where r is the correlation that is existing between these two sets of information so if it is 1 there is no increase in the information uh, coefficient but if it is anywhere less than 1 the information coefficient can increase uh, quite comfortably so any new source of information that is coming in we can say to what extent it can increase the information coefficient of the manager can very well be decided based on what is the newness of that particular uh, information or what is the dependency of that particular information with respect to the already existing information. And finally in this uh, session we are also going to look at the key assumptions that have gone into the fundamental law of active management wherein we are seeing that the manager has good knowledge of his skills so whatever he knows he knows them with perfection and whatever he acts whatever the information decisions he is taking he is taking them optimally that's a big assumption that we are making all the sources of information are independent if there is a kind of a dependency that is existing between them then the correlations need to be taken into consideration separately. So each bet, each forecast is based on new set of information only. That is what is one of the prime assumptions that this has made. And it is also making an assumption that the information coefficient is constant across all the forecasts. But which means the skill that is required to forecast for each of the security it is going to be constant but if i say that no each security requires a different skill to be forecasted obviously all the securities have to be classified into various skill based buckets and for each skill we have to form, come out with a separate information coefficient and use the additivity principle to arrive at the overall information ratio so, all these assumptions are uh, to be uh, considered as a part of fundamental loss of active management and understanding of this and the relationship between the optimal risk levels and uh, the uh, risk aversion levels will definitely uh, help in terms of uh, 
choosing portfolio management which can maximize the information ratio i hope you got uh, some level of uh, understanding into this fundamental law of active management in case you have any further queries regarding the same you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that i have provided or you can even send in an email at vamsidhar@pacegurus.com thanks a lot uh, for listening uh, to this uh, session thank you very much